Cam. If you're new, I'm Cam. Welcome to the Print Life. All right, today's agenda is pretty light. Uh, first thing on the list, we got to set up and print some athletic shorts for a client of ours. What else was there? Oh yeah, we got to do it. I need to set up a three color water-based job and the clients are supposed to be dropping off the garments today or later this afternoon. So once those get here, well, we'll probably start that job tomorrow morning, but we'd like to have the setup done. Other than that, I'm not sure, but I'll get back to you. Let's start the setup. First job of the day set up. It's 1048, so I'm gonna do some admin work, answer some emails, and then I'll get started printing that sucker. So the first thing that I've been doing lately before getting the emails or checking job statuses, going over the books. Uh, one thing I don't like about QuickBooks, which my old accounting software, even though I didn't know how to use it, it did have the ability to budget. So like based on last year's numbers and what you expected to do this year, you could build budgets through a year. This one doesn't allow you to do it. Here's an interesting observation. I experienced it a little bit when I applied for the Monument trademark, but it's, it seems to have gotten like a hundred times worse. So you, uh, there must be just a bunch of companies that are like monitoring new trademark applications because my inbox has gotten, at first I was like, oh, this must be from the USPTO. And then you look at it and it's like trademark attorneys, uh, trademarktracking.com. So if you guys apply for a trademark, However, through a third party service, you do it yourself or you use a lawyer, you're still probably gonna get littered with emails from scam artists. So pay very close attention. If it doesn't come from the USPTO or the company or lawyer that you use to file the trademark, it's probably some kind of hustle. So be aware. Yeah, as you printers are fully aware, a lot of the times when you get garments from clients that have bought them on AliExpress or somewhere in China or India, you, it's like other than going to the website and doing research, which I've done and I still couldn't find any info on it, uh, where they bought it because I couldn't find the, short, the shorts. But even if you do have that, a lot of the times it does not say what the fabric blend is. And I've looked everywhere on here. Don't know. So my assumptions, just better safe than sorry, are going to be that this is a blend, which means I'm going to use Super Will Flex, a high opacity ink, and I'm going to put a low cure additive in it to prevent bleeding. And then I'm going to just, of course, do a tester. Before I do any printing or anything like that, I will run a couple of garments through the dryer at the temperature that I think it needs to be at. Uh, this is just to make sure nothing funky is going to happen. At this point, I can't even say there's a reason for it. I just like to make sure that they are getting up to the proper temperature and all that kind of shit. So, I don't know. It's just something I've always done. You can use your little heat gun or your uh, strips to make sure that your temperature is correct. Yeah, they're coming out way too hot. Drop this temperature. So we gotta drop the temp. You gotta wait. Let the dryer temperature go down run the garments back through and see where you're ending up. I feel like the garment testing and uh, pre-run testing is where most printers, even myself, will fall short or will slack off. You should be constantly and consistently checking your dryer temperatures against jobs, especially on new fabrics that you're not familiar with. It's one thing with your tri-blends, you can set your dryer at a certain thing, you know what inks to use, you're good to go. But when you got some unfamiliar stuff, you gotta take a few minutes, 10 minutes, and set it up. Got the dryer to the temperature we needed it to be at. Now we can do our first sample print. Just one. First hit of gold, it's super transparent. Hopefully uh, the second pass will opaque it up and it'll be an acceptable print. 
I'm 90% sure that that shit is not low cured. After not one, not two, but three goddamn hits. So truthfully, this should be underbased. There's only 48 of them though, and it's gonna take more labor, but that's just the way. We're just gonna do a triple hit on this, which is insane. You never, I, I mean, in, yeah, triple hit sucks, bro. <laughs> The ink that I'm using that I said has a poly additive in it, I didn't personally add it to that. And because of that reason, I don't fully trust it. So I am gonna clear this ink out and I'm gonna mix up a fresh batch of the super light gold uh, with poly additive myself after I answer the phone. Thank you for calling Monument. This is Cam, how can I help you? Okay, well let's, uh, how about we do this just real quick since I know you're calling around. What if we just give you a quick a quick idea of what it would cost to get it to you by then? Yeah, yeah, so if you have any other questions, just don't hesitate to give me a call. I'm gonna save your quote here on the screen. Uh, and after you've talked to your artist, give me a call back, we'll get you set up. Yeah, yeah, anytime. We'll talk to you soon, bye. Back to Mixing this ink up. Like I said, this ink, I just don't trust it. And like a good boy, I'm gonna stir my gallon up good. It's a little hard to do one-handed whilst holding my camera. We're using International Coatings uh, Low Cure Additive, which is about five to, well actually that's what they state, it's five to six percent by weight, no more. So we go 849 grams, which is the weight of this, times 0 0.05, is 5%, equals 42 grams of the international coatings in the bucket. After this one, that'll be six garments. I'm gonna run to the end of the dryer just to double check that nothing's bleeding or getting out of whack. Remember when you stretch test that you need to let the thing cool before you actually commit to doing that stretch test. But well, let me show you how it goes down. Just find a, a big blotch of ink here and then just give it a pull. See how it stretches instead of cracking? If you see it cracking and separating, that means it's under cured. All right, I'm gonna get back to it. Hey, What's up, Danny? How are you? Jesse know that we got some work for tomorrow and probably the next day. 3.31 lunchtime. Grilled cheese sandwich. Whew. It's hot. Damn, it's hot, but good. Do you guys, do you remember, uh, I mean, come on. Do you remember fucking magazines? Like legitimate printed paper magazines. Who remembers this? A lot of your kids and you don't. You probably walked down the grocery aisle a few times and went like, hey, look at these colorful paper things. They're kind of like books. And what's a book? I kind of remember what a book is. But what the fuck is this papery book picture thing? Well, this is a magazine. 
whatever pops into our brain, that's what we think about. Whereas back in the day, during the time when you didn't have the internet and search wasn't available, you learned at the rate that the industry was teaching you. So let's say you got a, a, a subscription to something like Computer Arts. This is 2010, so this, the internet was still pretty prevalent. But like in 2000 or 98 or 99, I got Video Maker Magazine. And this was when nonlinear editing systems were just coming on the market. Uh, Sony Vegas and Adobe Premiere was like Adobe Premiere 1. Uh, and there were no, there wasn't a lot of industry information. You could Google how to do something, but what you had to do is you would subscribe to these publications and they would release tutorials to you on a monthly basis for a small fee. And what it did was you didn't just learn something when you needed it, you, you developed a toolbox of skills over a subscri like a, over a year subscription, a year of, of these industries teaching you what they thought was the most relevant lessons to learn during that year or during that 12 issue year. Now, I don't learn anything unless I need to know it. I just, just like when I remember in 95 when I was playing the guitar and I didn't know how to read music but I used tablature and guitar player, one of them, they would put four different tab songs in the back of the magazine. And this is the songs that you would fucking learn. And you would take the next 30 days to learn those four songs. This is how you absorbed information. I think that the learning curve was a lot slower back then. People didn't just rapidly progress like they do today, which I think is an amazing thing. But I do believe the people from that era had some very interesting fundamental differences in that they learned the fundamentals. It's a different world now. Uh, all the information, just a few keystrokes away. Right, the clients did drop off um, the garments for that three color job I was talking about earlier. I got all the screens burned and hardened and all this and that. I just need to post expose them uh, and then I'll be ready to start setting them up on press. I just loaded all except the last one into the into the uh, press, and I'm doing that now. Remember what I said about the best process for setup: load the screen into clamps, adjust the off contact, do that for all the screens, and then register. Do it in chunks; it makes life easier. Another small trick that I found when it comes to registering screens to a film is to always stand in the same spot. So don't come here, come over here. You want us to keep the same perspective on all the screens. You set one screen up from this side, you set the next screen up, screen up from that side, uh, your, your angles are going to be different and things will not be in. Another thing that I like to do is I register one, get it pretty close, and I go to the next one, get it pretty close, go to the third one, get it pretty close. Then I go back to the first one again and I really focus on dialing it in. Uh, that way you just don't spend too much time on one of them. I have found that the more time you spend on something, the more problems it'll give you. Was I just recording during all that? Three color water based job is set up. All we gotta do is mix the inks tomorrow morning. Uh, what time is it? It's 4.47, God damn it! I don't know what else to do with myself. I'm gonna just be hanging over there at the desk uh, waiting for the phone to ring. Action packed evening. to go all right I just want to talk about something really quickly maybe seven months ago I did the one and only t-shirt or blank garment review for the next level 3600 but I started that I intended to do a bunch of them but after shooting it and it took all day to do to do one review for one garment and edit it I was like okay this isn't repeatable 
Uh, over the course of the next couple of weeks, I'm going to focus, uh, other than on the shop and taking orders and stuff like that, I'm going to focus a large amount of my effort on creating a repeatable format for these garment reviews. Because these reviews are important not only to put on my product pages, but they're also important for the print fam. I want to make them so that you can use them and share them with your clients and and you know just so that it's a usable it's just so that it's very usable content that's the point right what i'm talking about right now is the reason that i'm even bringing this up uh the first one i used alex which was cool but there's been it's it's just been like a roadblock in the in the way of shooting these because i didn't want to use myself as the model but here's the deal from this point forward it's either gonna be me for the men's garments sorry but by the time I'm done shooting the majority of the men's and unisex tees, then I will hire like a woman to do, just to be able to do a handful of them in a day or so and just knock that shit out. Starting very soon. My phone's ringing, I gotta go. When you're in the middle of shooting a video and the phone rings and then you run out to get the phone and it's a fucking automated sales call. All right, it's, well, that's weird. It looks like I'm standing in a hole. 6.07, it's the end of the day for me. I'm gonna start wrapping it up and tune in tomorrow for the, God damn it. And tune in tomorrow for the, I'm gonna do like wall sits. Ugh. And tune in tomorrow for the live podcast. Take care of yourselves, print fam. Peace out. Ka-chow!